Good afternoon. My name is Bill King, and I'm with Cirrus Aircraft out of Duluth, Minnesota. And it's my pleasure today to be in front of you and to be able to share with you a little bit more about Cirrus Aircraft and a little bit about what makes Cirrus special. But first, I want to start by saying a special thank you to the University of North Dakota and the North Dakota team. We're proud to be part of the community here in Grand Forks, and it's a particular pleasure for me to be able to be here today. I'll tell you more about why that's so special to me in just a moment. My name again is Bill King. I am the Director of Government and Community Relations over at Cirrus Aircraft. I also happen to be a commercially rated pilot that is instrument rated. So I enjoy not only being able to talk about Cirrus Aircraft and be part of the corporate structure, but also have the great pleasure of flying the aircraft that we produce so proudly. I wanna share with you a little bit today about uh, a series of things. One of which though I wanna start with is by just highlighting why today is a very special day for me to be here. First of all, I started with Cirrus Aircraft very nearly 30 years ago. It was 1992, in the spring of 1992, when I first met the founders, and I'll show you their picture in a moment, but we started 30 years ago with the uh, team down at Cirrus Aircraft in a little town called Baraboo, Wisconsin. My first introduction to the company was with Alan and Dale Klapmeyer. I flew down, had an opportunity to meet with them, and one of the very first things we did was started to talk about locating a manufacturing plant that we could build our future aircraft from. As we started to consider where we wanted to do that, Grand Forks was very, very high on our list. So one of the first meetings I had, literally within the first month of starting at Cirrus Aircraft, we flew to Grand Forks and we met with a guy by the name of John Odegaard, who was the then the director of the, aeros- the new aerospace program in Grand Forks at the University of North Dakota Grand Forks. We also met with a gentleman by the name of Tom Clifford, who was the president of the university in those days. And I find it just amazing that within my first month, I had an opportunity to be in Grand Forks, be up here, and meet with those two individuals that were so instrumental in formulating the college of aerospace sciences. And here we are today speaking to the Odegaard School of Aerospace Sciences in Clifford Hall. That strikes me as just amazingly ironic because I'm about two months out from my retirement. So I literally, the first one of the first opportunities I had to meet with people outside of the company on behalf of Cirrus was right here in Grand Forks. And I'm now probably giving one of the last public addresses I will be doing in my career with Cirrus, and it's all done right here. This seems entirely appropriate to me, but I really am honored to be here. This is a very special day for us. So I want to give you a little bit of introduction about Cirrus Aircraft. Cirrus Aircraft was formulated back in 1984, and I'll show you some of that in a moment. But my first introduction to Alan and Dale Klatmeyer down in Baraboo included an opportunity to sit and get to know them and to get to feel that vision that they had for the aerospace industry and what they wanted to do in the aerospace industry to change the face of general aviation forever. So as part of that whole entire process, they invited me into the conference room in our very first meeting and laid out in front of us in this massive, massive table, conference table, was a plotter, a sheet of plotter paper. On that plotter paper, starting from the left to the right, all the way over to the left, there is a picture of an aircraft, top-down view. And with each one of those individual pictures, and the entire table was filled with a series of pictures, starting with a single passenger, four, a single engine, four passenger aircraft. That engineering designation was the SP-4. That aircraft you would know today as the SR-20. That was the first in the series of aircraft that was on the plotter paper, all the way to the left on the end of the table. And it from there came up to the next model and the next model and the next model, all the way through all of the designs. And as I stood there looking at those designs, being innovative designs, I remember asking uh, Dale Klapmeyer if he had a scissor handy. 
And his response was, why do you need a scissor? And I said, Dale, we need to cut this paper in half, throw all this stuff away that looks like conventional airframes. Let's start building the airplanes here and build all this stuff off to the right. And both Alan and Dale laughed right out loud at me and they said, Bill, you don't have a clue. The technology doesn't exist yet to build any of these airplanes any of them, not one of these airplanes, that technology doesn't exist, and it won't exist until we make it exist. That was my first introduction into Sirius Aircraft. At the time, we were building a kit airplane and selling the kit airplane to the marketplace with the dream of building all of these airplanes. We'll get back to that later on as we talk about things that today. What you, I want to talk about what you, why you might care about aviation in general, and I want to have an opportunity to talk about, as you start to consider a path, excuse me, for your career, I want to talk about why aviation might matter to you as a career and as an aviation career choice. And I want to talk a little bit about what makes Cirrus such a cool and such a special company, because we're driving technology. We want you to choose your career path wisely. As you start to think about what makes Cirrus such a cool company and how to choose a career path, one of the things we want you to be thoughtful about as we address you today is that we're driving technology that brought all of those different airplanes, brought those, the start of those airplane manu uh, models into the marketplace. And where we're at today, we started with the SR-20. If you were to look at that same plotter paper today, you would realize the jet, the vision jet that we'll talk about shortly, was about the midpoint of that entire sheet of plotter paper. So if you've got a little bit of an imagination, you can start to imagine what must be out there in our minds that we're working on that's out on this end of the paper. And you start to realize we've got a vision for what the future of aviation can be. And where we're at today is nowhere near where this company intends to take and drive technology. There's a, a phrase that, out in the marketplace that says that the future belongs to those people that show up. We're going to talk about that a little more in general. But Cirrus is an aviation manufacturer, a general aviation manufacturer. And what is general aviation? If it's not military and it's not commercial, it's general aviation. I had the opportunity to, uh, to fly with one of our congressmen a few years back, and we flew in and out of St. Paul to a series of meetings. And the meetings that we flew back and forth to involved coming in and out of the downtown St. Paul airport. When we were done, we were just about to walk out onto the ramp. And as we were about to walk out onto the ramp, I realized that the airplane sitting next to mine that we were about to get in and fly was a Pilatus PC-12. And there was an ambulance sitting next to that. And I looked at the congressman and I said, pay attention to this. We stood still and waited as they unloaded that Pilatus with a gurney and two adults. The two adults that got off were young, um, fairly young adults. And the person on the gurney was about a five-year-old child. And I remember looking at our congressman and saying, Jim, look at this. This is general aviation. This is why general aviation is so critical to the average American, the average person out there today. It's not just about guys going out and flying and picking up a $500 hamburger. It's so much more than that. It's so very much more than that. It includes things like air ambulance service and pro providing literally world-class service to help people that are in need. Cirrus Aircraft today is an avid, active sponsor of Angel Flight. We fly all kinds of ambulatory patients all over the upper Midwest in our aircraft, helping them to be able to get to and from a doctor appointment. And it gets to be an enormously important part of our future and what we do and what we want to be doing in the future. So what's the big deal about Cirrus Aircraft? Well, the big deal about it is that we are the number one producer of general aviation, single engine general aviation aircraft all over the world. We are literally the world's leader. We produce and sell more single engine aircraft than anybody else in the marketplace today. And we're proud of that. And we hope you are too, being part of the University of North Dakota here in Grand Forks. We have a very large manufacturing plant here in Grand Forks. And we'll show you a picture of that in a moment. 
The Grand Forks plant for Cirrus Aircraft produces every single piece of composite material that goes into the manufacturing of every single one of our airplanes. Every single Cirrus airplane starts its life right here in Grand Forks. We're proud of that, and we're proud of being part of the business community here in Grand Forks. So why does private aviation matter? It matters for a lot of reasons. I wanna show you a video that's just fun. We produced this video a long time ago, but it's just, it talks, it just, it, it helps to understand better why general aviation is so important. Because flying today is getting to be more and more cumbersome, more difficult, and substantially less reliable on commercial aviation carriers. If you don't believe me, Look at the news from this last weekend and you realize that we had a major manufacturer, a major airline that had over 2,000 cancellations in one weekend, making it next to impossible for people to travel around the country and creating bottlenecks everywhere. If in fact it's true that the future belongs to those people that show up, showing up must matter. And if you need to fly to show up, think about general aviation and the methodology that we fly. My aircraft never leaves without me. I never leave, a, never leave an airport late and I never miss a flight anymore because I'm holding the keys. I control my environment. I control my future. If it, the future belongs to those that show up, GA pilots show up. <laughs>
a 100 mile an hour or 100 knot aircraft is no longer fast enough to really define speed for efficiency. The trade-off just isn't there. So we knew the aircraft had to be about two or two and a half times the speed of the average automobile. So our SR20 is designed and, and engineered so that it flies at about 160 miles an hour, 160 knots. So we're able to take that aircraft across the ground at about two to two and a half times the speed of an automobile, even at the accelerated uh, 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 speed limits that are out on the freeways today. It had to be fast, it has to be quiet. Airplanes are notoriously now loud, both inside and out. We design an airplane that would be quieter than the existing aircraft that are out there today, both inside and out. Fast, quiet, comfortable. When you get to the airport, you probably, if you're an owner of the aircraft, did not drive to the airport in a used Yugo that had plastic seats or 1972 Chevrolet Impala. You drove to the airport in something like a Porsche, BMW, Lexus, Cadillac, a luxury sport utility vehicle of some sort. And you, when you get out of your car, what you get into has to be equal to or better for creature comforts. Yesteryear aircraft just simply didn't meet that design criteria. We'll show you more about that later. Fast, quiet, comfortable, inefficient. The aircraft had to be efficient. So our aircraft is designed to be very slippery and fast and deliver great speed and very, very comfortable and efficient flight characteristics, very slippery. So even our SR-20 is going to be able to travel at about 150 to 160 miles an hour and get 18 miles to the gallon. That's the effective trade-off in our terms of aerospace and our aircraft vis-a-vis -vis an automobile. I can guarantee you my truck, a brand new truck, does not get 18 and a half miles to the gallon, nor does it go 200 miles an hour. And I can assure you at 200 miles an hour, it really wouldn't get uh, uh, 18 miles per gallon. So you begin to realize fast, quiet, comfortable, and efficient makes sense. That's a great trade. But the real reason people don't fly in small, light general aviation aircraft, if they're gonna be dead level honest with you, the fact of the matter is they're afraid. They're afraid that they're gonna die. And frankly, they'd rather it wasn't today. So they tend not to be very excited or passionate about getting into small, light, general aviation aircraft. But what we knew was that we could design an aircraft to meet all of these criteria. And the, the highest criteria and the most important criteria for us was to make sure that what we were delivering was a new definition of safety in aerospace, which is exactly what we've done. So we have now what we call the Cirrus Life. As you start to think about traveling in light general aviation aircraft, we call this the Cirrus Life. And here's why. As we define why people fly, we know many people fly for business. We get it. You buy an airplane to get from point A to point B. Back to my point about the future belongs to those that show up. That is certainly true. People want to fly for business to assure that they can get where they need to get to when they need to get there. Some people fly just for pleasure. We get that too. I get that. After 30 years of flying, I still look forward to the next time I get to climb into an airplane and go fly. It just has never gotten old for me. I love to fly. Family is a big reason why a lot of people fly. Let me give you a good example of this. So I have family in Chicago. I have family in Minneapolis. I live in Duluth. So if I need to get from my home down to a family commitment in Chicago, and I need to get back again, and that happens to be in the middle of the week, in order for me to get to Chicago, if I drive, it's an all-day drive. It's about a seven or an eight-hour drive from Duluth. In an airplane, in a Cirrus, it's about an hour and 45 minutes, hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. So if I need to get down there and I have to drive, I have an all-day transportation issue that I have to face. When I get there, I do whatever it is I'm gonna do with the family in the evening, go to dinner or what have you, get done, and I then have to drive home, either pull an all-nighter driving, which makes me worthless for work for the next day, or I spend the night and spend the next day driving. If I'm gonna fly commercial, a commercial connection isn't a whole lot better than that, but I certainly am gonna lose one full day of production and productivity. But if I take a Cirrus airplane, 
I get in a couple hours early. I'll leave at 3 o'clock in the afternoon by 4.30. I'm in Chicago by 5 o'clock. I'm at dinner. Have dinner, do whatever I'm going to do with whatever our family commitment is. I turn around, get in the airplane, I fly back home, and I'm home at 10 o'clock to watch the news at home in my easy chair. I've lost no days of work, and I'm refreshed the next day. I've still made all of those connections. It's about family? Yeah, it's about family, but it's also about business. If you were to ask the, uh, the Internal Revenue Service if that was a business trip or a personal trip, they would say, of course it's a personal trip. You weren't seeing anybody for business. That's true. I wasn't seeing anybody for business. But I had to be there, and if I had to do it some other way other than general aviation, I certainly would have cost my company a day or two of productivity. So was it a business trip? Well, no. It was kind of a business trip, kind of not, but I can't deduct that on my income tax without getting an audit, right? So the question is, what, what is general aviation all about? It's about time management. It's about life management. It's about literally getting yourself into a time machine. We deliver back to you as a significant owner. We deliver back to you time. You can't get any other way. That's what general aviation really is. It's all about time management. It's the opportunity to reclaim some of those hours in your day and manage your life. So when my kids were in high school, my daughters played volleyball, I never missed a single game, home or away, because I always had an airplane at my disposal. So if I was traveling in a business, I'd make sure that when I traveled, I was in one of my airplanes so that if I had to go to a game, one of my daughter's volleyball games, I literally would get in the airplane and I'd fly directly to wherever that volleyball game is going to be out of town. Most of the parents weren't able to go to all of those away games. I never missed a single game in four years. I'm proud of that. I'm pleased about that. That was a great investment of my time to invest in my kids. <clears throat> so what do people think of when they think of Cirrus Aircraft? Well, they think about a lot of things. They think about safety, they think about innovation, and they think about comfort. You recall that we just talked about this, the five design criteria about the Cirrus Aircraft and what it is that makes Cirrus so special. The thing that becomes very, very obvious to most people is the parachute that we have incorporated in the aircraft. The concept behind that actually started all the way back with the inception of the company back in 1984. In 1984, the founders, Alan and Dale Klapmeyer, seen here in this photograph, started Cirrus Aircraft. Believe it or not, that is actually where they started the company, in the basement of a barn in Baraboo, Wisconsin. In the basement of that barn, there was a very large open space, and they were actually able to build the molds and the plugs that went into the manufacturing of our first airplane, which was the VK-30, or a kit airplane. Alan Klapmeyer, seen closest to the uh, camera in this particular shot, Alan Klapmeyer was learning how to fly on instruments, and in the process, because he was flying uh, under the cover, under Foggles, and had a instructor sitting next to him, he was in an instruction flight, and another aircraft collided with them. They had a mid-air collision. Those two airplanes collided, and the gentleman in the other aircraft ended up spinning in, and he did not survive the impact. Alan and his instructor managed somehow to get that badly damaged aircraft that they were flying in back on the ground safely, to which Alan realized, this is insane. There's got to be a safety mechanism that we can design to get airplanes down safely after a catastrophic event like this. And of course, that was the parachute by definition. Well, fast forward now just 15 years from 1984 to 1999, and we delivered our first certified airplane to the market in 1999. That's a photograph of the first delivery of the first certified Cirrus aircraft. Ironically, that particular aircraft was, uh, the tail number is 415 Whiskey Mike. That airplane, believe it or not, not only still exists, it's still flying, and it's actually based out of Crystal, Minnesota. That airplane has been all across the country and sold a number of different times, and it's all the way back in Minnesota, which we think is pretty cool. Our first airplane is still actively being flown today. Today, as we stand here, we have about 1,850 employees that are located near the Grand Forks, Duluth, 
uh, down in uh, Knoxville where we deliver aircraft or down in McKinney, Texas. We also have a facility now also down in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, down in Chandler that's an engineering center, as well as designing and starting to set up service centers around the country. We have a new service center we're just about to open down in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona and Kissimmee, Florida. So we have two new ones coming online this year along with McKinney, Texas. So we design and build everything in Duluth, Minnesota, which you see is the large uh, spot on the map there, of course, and we manufacture all of our components for all of the aircraft in Grand Forks. After, we design, after we've built all of those composite parts, we transfer them by truck over to Duluth, we assemble all the aircraft in Duluth, and then we transfer them down for sale down in Knoxville, Tennessee. You recall we talked a little bit about speed, and the speed of the aircraft is a critical factor in people's deciding what is good value in an aircraft. Speed, people think of as the speed of the aircraft, and that is certainly true. The speed of the aircraft matters. The SR-20 is about 160 knots. The SR-22 is gonna travel about 180 knots, 185, and that aircraft is a very, very efficient uh, aircraft. But equally important is the speed of the avionics and the information systems on board the aircraft. The speed of the avionics and the informational technology that's in uh, each and every one of these aircraft really does set a standard. So you realize that you literally now can take your iPhone and you can completely program your entire flight plan, get in the aircraft, and transfer that information all directly into your um, avionics on board the aircraft and go fly. This is the interior of a brand new, one of our brand new 8,000 um, series aircraft. Uh, we've now delivered over 8,000 aircraft and this year, this is one of the 8,000 aircraft that we were manufacturing and we delivered this year. The interior of these airplanes is truly remarkable. If you haven't had the opportunity to get in it, get out to the airport, get in one of our airplanes and it will clearly demonstrate to you that they are comfortable beyond anything else that's in the marketplace today. Safety really is the hallmark of what we are all about at Cirrus Aircraft, and that safety comes in in a number of different ways. Everybody thinks of it as the parachute, or those types of safety devices, or the roll cage, or the structural integrity of the aircraft itself. But the safety really begins right here. It begins right here in the interior of the aircraft. It's more comfortable, therefore you don't mind sitting and you aren't distracted by being terribly uncomfortable as you're flying. You're very comfortable in the aircraft and it gives you situational awareness and information that becomes meaningful to you in terms of flying safely. On the screens here you see this particular aircraft flying out in the western part of the United States where there's a tremendous amount of terrain. The information systems on this aircraft will keep you from a flight into into terrain, a controlled flight into terrain situation. You can be flying completely blind in hard IMC conditions and look down at your screen and literally as you look down on your screen you're seeing what you would be seeing if it was daylight conditions in VFR. We've given you that technology. It is game changing technology in terms of safety. Safety on the interior of the airplane is one thing, but safety on the outside of the aircraft comes down to this type of technology, which is actually the lighting system on the aircraft, and we see this as primary safety as well. The lights are extremely bright. They're set up so that they act in a very specific called out manner, so that as you're on the ground, they come in in one format, as you're flying, they're another, as you're coming in for an approach, it's another, and all of these lights interact to make the aircraft even safer. But I want you to imagine with me for just a minute, because safety really does come down to what if happens, uh, what if should happen to you. So I want you to put yourself in this scenario for just a moment. Imagine with me, if you will, that you fly for business and you take off and you fly from point A to point B and point C and point D and back again. And you have to do that kind of flight on a daily basis or nearly daily basis as part of your actual business activity. To conduct business, you need to get to a lot of places on any given week. Imagine with me that you get up in the morning at 5 in the morning or 5.30, 
You get to the airport and you have to take off and fly from point A to point B. I want to have you introduce you to a guy named Greg Huntley. This is his story of the Cirrus SR-22 that he owns in North Carolina. I heard him go over. Sometimes I'm asleep, sometimes not. And I heard him go over that morning. The morning that uh, the morning that it happened. Got Lexington off your left side in five miles. When the phone rang, I thought that's odd. Summer heard me. She came in there and she was like, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "Your dad went down this morning." And uh, I said, "But he's okay." Two four two Mike Bravo, turn left, hitting us. I'm not calling it a crash. I call it an incident, and that's what the FAA called it because there was so little damage done to the airplane, they called it an incident. My name is Greg Huntley. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I work in the construction business. 18 years ago, he decided he was going to get his license. I fly five days a week for work. I wasn't crazy about it. Never have been, but um, it does save a lot of time. It gets home much earlier. On that day, it was on October the 22nd of 2014. Everything was normal. I went to the, my hangar, and as I rotated, I just remember thinking, man, it is black. And about 10 or 15 minutes in, I reached up, cut the light on, looked at some paperwork. Everything is just normal. Around 6, 17 in the morning, I heard a sound and the prop stopped. Right before I keyed up and declared an emergency, I just thought, I had five minutes to live. Because I knew it'd take me about five minutes from 5,000 feet. I thought you need to get a hold of yourself. And I made a mental decision that at 3,000 feet, if I didn't like what I saw, I was pulling the chute. At 3,000 feet, I was still seeing black out of the windshield, so I informed the controller that I was going to pull the chute. The thought came to mind, I've taken so many kids and their parents on their first airplane ride and non-pilots. And I briefed them on, if something were to happen to me, I want you to reach up and pull down on the handle. And then I tell them that you're gonna float down under the canopy and you'll be fine. As I reached up that morning and I put my hands on that handle, I just thought for some reason it came over me, you told them that you would float down. You're fixing to find out. It was hard for him. I know it was. It was a very loud explosion. I am so thankful. You go pretty extreme nose down. That he pulled the chute. I don't think it was more than a minute till I hit the ground. I think every airplane should have it. And I could not believe. I said, well, what have I hit? And it was very emotional when he got home. And I looked at you on the ground. And you're in a grass field. He grabbed me and we just held on for a long time and cried a little bit. Obviously, after that, my phone was just exploding with text, phone calls. And, and it'll be very emotional because we're all very, very close. There's a lot of people that really care about you. The parachute does work. I'm living proof. It kept my family together. It only reinforces your belief in the airplane. I would get in it more now than I would before the accident. Any other airplane in the dark from 5,000 feet. I had zero chance of survival. I know I made the right decision. I'm alive today because of Cirrus aircraft, and I'm happy with the decision I made. Now you know why we're so passionate about the parachute and parachute safety. We spent a fortune in the day trying to figure out how to develop that technology and get it incorporated into the aircraft. But it is in no small measure a big part of our success and our success story because we took the time and the energy 
and invested the dollars required in order to bring a safer aircraft to market. You remember the five stars, the fifth being safety. It's all about safety and energy management. That's what we really do well at Cirrus Aircraft. We've now de delivered, uh, designed, built and delivered over 8,000 aircraft into the marketplace as we sit here today. And we deliver all kinds of different aircraft for different purposes. Here you see the special mission aircraft. This happens to be uh, an aircraft owned by a state patrol that takes a floor camera, it incorporates that right into the aircraft, and in that particular circumstance, it's credited with saving the state almost $3 million a year because they no longer have to be involved in high-speed chases. If that aircraft is airborne, it can be someplace over a metroplex, literally within a minute or two, and they can take the technology from that floor camera, tie it down, and lock it in on a specific automobile. Once they're locked in, they just loiter and let the computer track the car while the police officers all call off the chase and don't put anybody else in harm's way. About the time that that automobile stops in any location, they literally are a block or two behind it. And it doesn't matter anymore because they literally know where that automobile is. Within seconds of it stopping, they're being visited by a state patrol. So we're proud of our special mission aircraft and the technology that the aircraft affords for helping them to, to keep peace in, in, uh, in this day and age. We also have a tremendous amount of flight training that goes on. And this is a great example of it. WMU, uh, Western Michigan, uses the aircraft, as well as a number of different uh, universities and college collegiate programs, including the Air Force Academy. The Air Force Academy actually has a fleet of our airplanes, and they take cadets up in the air and literally give them their first experience in flight as part of their aircraft academy uh, efforts down in Colorado Springs, Colorado, take the air, all of the cadets up and they get uh, introductory flight as part of their curriculum at the uh, Air Force Academy. In addition to that, a number of different, uh, different uh, uh, instructional groups utilize that, uh, use our aircraft, we're proud of all of them. One of them that's kind of interesting or intriguing to us is also Emirates. Emirates is interesting for this reason. They started their own process for training, just an ab initio, their own internal process of training pilots. And they've now incorporated the SR-22 as their primary training tool. That is the tool, the aircraft, that launches them into their uh, career path as captains in Emirates Airlines aircraft, commercial aircraft. They actually start with the Cirrus SR-22. After they've graduated through their initial pilot training, get their initial ratings, they literally then step up to the Phenom aircraft that you see in this. Uh, by the time they're done with the training in the Phenom, they at that point literally transition immediately into uh, in revenue producing flights in Emirates uh, airliners. We've got a really clever group of marketing people up at Cirrus Aircraft. I'll talk more about that in a second. We think of ourselves as being really, really smart and being able to put together really fun videos that are captivating and intriguing and help us market our product around the world. We're proud of that. We had a lot of fun with this particular uh, delivery of aircraft. The Emirates Airlines team, their marketing group, not to be outdone by Cirrus's marketing, put together a thank you video after we had delivered our fleet of Emirates aircraft overseas to the UAE. This is their thank you video. I thought I'd show it just so you can see the airline industry is rich with a lot of creative characters. Hold on my darling Be away for some time Running way too fast This life is short So you better make it last Row, row, row
was their thank you video to Cirrus Aircraft and the Cirrus Aircraft team back in the States. We thought that was just priceless. What a fun, fun video they produced for us. We thought, what a nice way to say thank you. I thought that was just fun and you might enjoy seeing it. I want to divert for just a minute now and tell you just briefly about the Cirrus Vision Jet. The Vision Jet is designed around, again, a single pilot or a single pilot aircraft, piloted aircraft, but it's all turbine power. I want to show you a very brief video here introducing the Vision Jet to one of our really favorite customers. Thank everybody at Grand Forks and Duluth. This is a dream come true, unbelievable feeling this morning, coming to see my plane. I just want to thank you guys for putting it out there and uh, putting your heart and soul in this, and then I'm gonna put my heart and soul into flying this thing. Thank you. That was a photograph, if you're a sports fan at all, that was Ken Griffey Jr. taking delivery of his Cirrus Vision Jet. Yes, he does fly his own jet, and that's it. I told you that we produce uh, all of our components right here in Grand Forks, North Dakota. What I'm showing you here is actually a video of a large computerized table that is designed to cut and mark each ply of the carbon fiber or fiberglass, in this case carbon fiber, that goes into manufacturing each and every component that we put into the aircraft. They're all hand built. This is a great example. This is what goes on right here in Grand Forks literally every single day. So literally running now seven days a week. This is one of the things that we are so very proud of. Our team here in Grand Forks just does an amazing job of manufacturing aircraft quality parts at an amazing level in volumes that are literally just remarkable. As they complete those, com those manufacturing, those composite parts, they get trucked over to Duluth, Minnesota, where we assemble them. And these are some shots from our assembly facility in Duluth, Minnesota. Our Duluth facility is literally about 250,000 square feet of manufacturing space. We have about 100,000 square feet of space designed, believe it or not, just for the purpose of painting the aircraft. So we've got a massive paint facility there as well. I want to take just a second here and show you a new piece of safety equipment that you may or may not be aware of. But we talked about Greg Huntley, right? You saw Greg, you saw his wife and his daughter as they were talking about his experience with the aircraft and having had a complete and total engine failure in the dark. And literally he walked away from that event completely unscathed and is now flying a new Cirrus airplane, which we're very happy about. What about the jet? I want you to watch this. You will now see an entirely different way that we are again changing the paradigm of safety in general aviation. The story of Sears Aircraft is really one of historic innovation and constant evolution. For well over 30 years, we've really been crafting technologies and solutions that define and redefine what we have come to call personal aviation. Cirrus has become synonymous with safety, and our engineers, our world-class engineers, have really outdone themselves this time. They've created a product that we believe is going to change personal aviation forever. I think we all think about the future of aviation and autonomous flight and when's that day going to arrive when I just press one button and the aircraft taxis, it takes off, it flies me across the country and lands at my destination. And we're not there at this point in time, but we've taken a step in that direction. One thing that every pilot and passenger is looking for every time they hop into an aircraft is something that makes them feel safe. We had this amazing opportunity to get our hands on our field demonstration aircraft. And I want to take you along and show you this amazing game-changing technology that we call Safe Return Emergency Auto Land System. 
Safe return, very simply, is a safety system where if for any reason the pilot's ever incapacitated, a passenger can land the aircraft with just the touch of a button. Emergency auto land activating. So just after the safe return button was touched, the vision jet turns into an autonomous vehicle. Once activated, safe return transforms the screens on the perspective touch plus flight deck to screens that are useful for a passenger. The next thing Safe Return does is it uses its global terrain database to identify the nearby terrain and figure out the best path to avoid that terrain. And it's not just terrain. The Safe Return system uses satellite data link to navigate around potentially hazardous weather. Once Safe Return's identified the potentially hazardous terrain and weather nearby, it then uses information uh, like fuel remaining, winds aloft, and winds on the ground to select a suitable airport. And once it selects that airport, it uses additional information to select the most suitable runway. Not only is Safe Return taking care of the aircraft, it's also taking care of the passengers. And it's announcing over the audio system how much time is remaining, how many minutes are left until that aircraft touches down. The Safe Return system also automatically squawks the emergency squawk frequency 7700, which begins the response of the emergency services vehicles at the airport of intended landing. It's just incredible to watch the vision jet roll itself out onto final approach on the right speed, on the right course, with the gear and flaps down, with the stabilized descent all set up. And of course, none of this would be possible without the Vision Jet's auto throttle system. So it's been using the auto throttle throughout this entire safe return process, and it uses it as it slows down and prepares for landing. Once the flaps are down and the gears down, line right up on the center line for that runway, and it begins its slow, stabilized descent into the airport. As it gets closer and closer to the runway, the Vision Jet uses its radar altimeter to compare that with the GPS position above the ground, and we have a remarkably precise number that shows us exactly how high we are above the ground as we're coming in. And just as we get over the runway in the right spot, the safe return system reduces the throttle and puts the aircraft automatically and autonomously into a flare, holds it just above the ground, and the aircraft touches back down to the ground. Once the aircraft has touched down, the safe return system begins pressing the brakes, slows down the aircraft, and brings it to a complete stop, allowing the passengers to open the door and exit. From now on, if they need to, with just the touch of a button, passengers can land the vision jet. Safe Return is this incredible technology that adds another layer of safety to the vision jet. And that's now become part of this larger total safety solution on the vision jet, which includes the Cirrus airframe parachute system, unique to Cirrus aircraft, which is the ultimate backup. Maybe once or twice in your career, you get this opportunity to work on this amazing game-changing technology, and the whole team here at Cirrus Aircraft has had that opportunity again. From day one at Cirrus Aircraft, we've always been looking to the future, innovating, figuring out new ways and bringing new technologies to aviation to make it more efficient, safe, to bring more innovation to the aircraft. Safe return is a first step down that path to autonomous flight, and I can assure you, the entire Cirrus Aircraft team is going to be leading the way. So that gives you some kind of a sense of the kind of ingenuity, energy, and innovation that takes place on a daily basis at Cirrus Aircraft. I want to share with you this thought. If that kind of technology and energy doesn't interest you as a career path, think about being employed somewhere else, not at Cirrus Aircraft because that is, by definition, what we mean when we say we care passionately about customer value. So the one question that remains for a lot of people is, yeah, I get the push button, but what if you're involved in a mid-air collision? Some knucklehead ends up running into you with his little airplane and ends up damaging your aircraft beyond use. The safe return button isn't gonna be your solution. No, it's not. We also put, uh, literally put a CAPS parachute system on the jet. Yes, we took the time, energy, and expense to develop this system so that it's usable on our jet, not just the piston, for that very purpose. Let me show you how we did it.
That was our CAPS deployment test on the Vision Jet. Yes, we really did go to the effort to do it. And somebody once asked me, yeah, but did you take the airplane all the way to the ground? We have taken airplanes all the way to the ground, including the jet, as part of our deployment test process. That was one of our test flights we did where we released the parachute. It's not intended to be released. It doesn't release on commercial air, on our aircraft that we uh, market into the marketplace. But that is the game-changing safety device in the event that all else fails. And we're very, very proud of that. So in conclusion today, I want you to think a little bit about who we are as a company and literally what kind of an operation we do and what kind of an operation we run on a daily basis. But I want to share with you one more thing as we depart this, uh, this topic today, and that's this. We want you guys to start thinking as students about your future. We're looking to our future, and we're looking to our future to try and acquire and find the very best talent we can. We really mean that sincerely. So we want you to consider what that might be for you. Consider a future that incorporates the kind of thing we've talked about today, this kind of energy, this kind of innovation, and this kind of opportunity for your future. Because we believe that we are literally on the at the beginning of what is going to be a very bright, very, very energetic future of bringing new and exciting products to the world of general aviation. We've just scratched the surface on what we think we can do. We're only at the halfway point, for goodness sakes, of my sheet of paper from 30 years ago. So you can imagine the kind of energy, skill, and vision that lies in our building. So the question is this, yeah, you're not a pilot. Maybe you're not a pilot. Well, maybe your, Mike, maybe your uh, degree is in specialized in the area of business administration and accounting. I've got all kinds of openings in my accounting department. Maybe your degree is in HR, human capital, human resource. I've got openings in my HR department. If you're an engineer, but you're not aerospace engineering, you're consumer electronics. I've got a building that is dedicated to engineering skill sets that are in that very arena, the consumer electronics mentality, those engineers we need at Sirius Aircraft. If you're an aerospace engineer, we've got new designs we're always working on. We need you, we want you. If you're in logistics, if you're in uh, uh, purchasing, if that's your background, we need that talent too. General administration, we need that talent too. If you're working on a pre-law degree, We've got lawyers that are literally full-time at Cirrus Aircraft that are intent on making sure we've got all the legal, button, legal parts of our business buttoned up for things like patents or for contract uh, drafting and management. It doesn't matter what your skill set or your interest has been here at UND. We want to talk to you. If you're inspired by energy, innovation, and opportunity like we've shared with you today, we hope that you'll pick up the phone and come over and visit us. Come out to our Grand Forks plant, see what we're doing there. If you're into manufacturing engineering, I've got all kinds of openings even here in Grand Forks. So we're excited about our future. We're bullish on what we think the future of aviation is going to be. We know this, we know that the future of aviation is literally chock full of aircraft that are going to be delivered by Cirrus Aircraft into the marketplace. Again, thank you for your time, thank you for your attention, and we hope that you've enjoyed today's presentation and that you'll pick up the phone and give us a call. We would love to talk to you about a great future in the world of aerospace at Cirrus Aircraft. Thank you again. <music>